if you're living in a totalitarian country, your responsibility is to say the obvious true thing again and again, and it doesn't matter how many times you say it. The more you say it, the better. Uh, if it's boring, that's okay. Um, what you don't want to be is a person who's not open to any sort of influence whatsoever. Um, you have to grow, you have to develop. Um, but what may happen, if you're open to experience, if you're open to other people's point of view, is that you become further entrenched in your own. If, if I meet someone uh, who uh, supports, um, what would be an example that I have just, I'm not going to accept, I'm not going to change my mind. I don't think so. Uh, the Biden administration has been a disaster for women. On the border with Mexico, in Afghanistan, in big American cities. That is for sure. At the same time, what he's done is he's increased affirmative action program programs uh, for black people and for women and that benefits them so if you think it benefits somebody uh, to give somebody them something because of their race or their color and you think that really benefits them and it probably does sometimes well then you can say that's a benefit that he brought um, Afghanistan the border the, the streets of American cities it would um, I don't know that it's possible. I mean, you can just look at the numbers, right? Um, so, like, I just hope that I'm not boring, right? Okay, so, <clears throat> what's the next thing? Okay, uh, talk about the election in Canada. In 2015, a big part of the Liberals' success was that they argued for legalizing marijuana. Most people think that was a good idea, but it was an especially good idea, I think, for the people who like to smoke a lot of mar marijuana. And so he won a lot of those votes, as well as a lot of votes from people who just thought, well, in a way, what does the government, how do they have any business interfering with the person's freedom like that, right? It doesn't seem to be as harmful as alcohol. So there's a contradiction there. Um, and so people voted to support it. I think it, it was probably a, a good idea. But now what they're doing is that they're pushing forward with the harm reduction, and that is the key uh, concept. The harm reduction uh, attitude or whatever policy is what it is. Um, and their idea is that rather than looking at hard drugs, cocaine and heroin and methamphetamine as a, uh, law, an issue of law, they're going to look at it as an issue of medicine. And that is so simple-minded, I can't actually get my head around it. Because it's both, right? Um, if you're going to make it, and the, the Canadian policy is in a way what they're suggesting is the very worst, because they're gonna decriminalize small amounts of cocaine and heroin, but they've been decriminalized already, and you can see the effect. More people are getting addicted to cocaine and heroin and methamphetamine. That's the result, right? That's what's coming from it. Just, you, you don't know that there's more heroin addiction in, uh, BC or the rest of Canada or the rest of the Western world because of the harm reduction model. Uh, it suits China very well because it will allow them to sell more drugs into the Western world and they're using that as a way to weaken us so that they can take uh, control of our society. It's called, I think it's called unrestricted warfare. If they can ruin the fabric of society, then the society is easier to take over. And the, uh, the Liberal Party just fed directly into their aims in that, in that sense.
If you took Mao Zedong, flipped him on his head, shook his, shook him, a lot of influ influential people in the West, most of the Liberal Party, probably a lot of the uh, NDP, the Conservative probably as well, but it's going to be the Liberals and the NDP that are the worst. And also the other group that's uh, making deals with uh, China is Aboriginal groups in uh, Northern Canada because they wanted 5G. The Five Eyes Alliance thought, no, 5G from China is a way for them to spy on absolutely everything that we do. And so we have to slow it down. Well, Aboriginal people weren't getting their 5G, which is a, weren't even getting their 4G, I don't think, which was definitely an issue for them. And so they made contracts with China that apparently are none of anybody else's business. Nobody talks about that. Um, so to get back to the, this idea to win the election by appealing to people who are fans of hard drugs, for example, or for people who have bought into the harm reduction model, um, they might get elected largely on that vote. There's a lot of hard drug enthusiasts in Canada and they're appealing to it. Um, okay, this is where it gets repetitive. Uh, and this is where I've had this feeling for a long time. I mean, really a long time. What the government should do is that they should make cocaine and I think uh, heroin and cocaine legal and they should themselves become the people who provide it and at a reasonable price. Because if the government isn't selling it to people and it's pretty much illegal to have it, then the money goes to criminal gangs and it quite, of, quite often goes to the Chinese Communist Party who's using uh, drug money to buy out uh, real estate and the political system and the educational system. So the government has to take it over, otherwise you give it to the CCP. I wouldn't trust the government with it either, actually. So there's something I've changed my mind on, I guess. Um, so if you're a hard drug addict, you should be able to go to the government and say, I'm addicted to these drugs, I'll fall apart if I don't have them, and the government will say, okay, that means you get a certain amount of it. But if you've got people playing around on the edges, and selling it to lonely people walking down the street for a low price, we're going to bust you. There's no war on drugs. It just it just goes on all over the place. They've got these harm reduction uh, shoot up gallery places and the neighborhoods go to shit. Um, so it's amazing. I mean, in Canada, you have drug addicts running around all over the place. And I guess our idea is that uh, people should have freedom of movement and association and that kind of thing. And so we don't interfere with them, but we just interfered with all of those things with the COVID epidemic. Um, it's apples and oranges in a sense, obviously, uh, but the key concept is controlling, um, violating people's freedoms, whether that's necessary in order to respond to a public health epidemic. Well, I would argue that the drug crisis in China, in Canada, is a, a pandemic. So, and they told little kids who had nothing to do with anything and who had no chance of getting really sick from COVID, like almost zero, if you're under 20. They told them, you have to stay home. You can't go outside. You can't go to school. But here, uh, the cocaine and heroin and methamphetamine addicts can run around all over the place. Uh, they get involved in all kinds of crime. Uh, number one, they're spelling, spending a, a good portion of their welfare check on drugs. I've seen people say, well, no, that's not really true. They don't. No. Uh, go downtown Toronto and look what happens on uh, Welfare Wednesday when they get uh, drugs. Do the drug markets fill up on Welfare Day? Of course they do. Um, I 
I don't know if I have any more to say on on, on the election. Uh, they're calling the election when everybody is worried about other things. Um, they're calling the election when they're going to have a better chance of getting elected because of all the money that's going out and because the inflation rate is just sinking in. Although that might that might be from my point of view it's sinking in. Anybody that's buying uh, bread or milk or gasoline or rent or trying to buy a house, they know perfectly well how bad the inflation is. Benefits the rich, benefits the people who own land, hurts the poor. They don't care about the poor. Except in the sense they will give them something and uh, that way they become dependent on the government and they're more likely to vote for them. They care about them in that sense. Uh, see, I, yesterday I heard someone on a government-sponsored news channel say, one day there will be a Trudeau scandal that he won't be able to avoid. And this is going to uh, destroy his chances of being re-elected. Okay, um, I think there's been enough scandals. There's been enough scandals to get rid of uh, Prime Minister, there's been probably 10 or 20 really serious ones that aren't even funny. I mean, they're not just like a India trip uh, kind of embarrassing thing when he's danced around. The sinister part of the India trip is that he bro brought a Sikh separatist to India. So him going there puts us in a bad relationship with Hindus in India. It puts us between, it puts us on the side of Sikhs. Uh, sorry, but the biggest uh, terror event in Canadian history was Air India. The Sikhs blew up that plane. Jagmeet Singh isn't sure that it happened. <clears throat> anyway, yeah, I thought this was funny. One day there will be a scandal. I think that they must have known how funny that was when they said it. Uh, we're not going to know the results of the election for two days until after. It's a pattern. That's what happened in the United States. There was election day, Trump had won. Two or three later, days later, the votes come in and uh, Biden wins. And so we're suspicious, especially because it happened in the key areas. If it happens in the key areas in Canada, then we're gonna have to start drawing a parallel. I don't think that uh, the Liberal Party in Canada is as demented as the Democratic Party in the United States. I really don't. And I don't think that the Black Lives Matter movement in Canada is, a, strictly speaking, a terrorist organization because they didn't actually get anybody out um, committing acts of terrorism. Okay, so the newest thing from the BLM, they want amnesty for all the uh, BLM protesters, they call them protesters. A protester in this context is an arsonist, a mugger, a thief, um, who ran rampant. So if they were stealing things and burning things down and mugging people, then that's part of the BLM protest. Black people had so much rage inside their heart that we had to let them express it. And so they'll get off. The uh, December 16th protesters, many of whom really did almost nothing and aren't even charged with anything, are still in solitary confinement. That's political persecution. You're on the wrong side, uh, you get thrown in jail. Um, back to Canada, Maxime Bernier isn't on any of the government-funded news channels, but the Green Party is. That's because uh, Maxime Bernier is on the right, he's a white guy. The Green Party leader is on the left, She's a black woman, and so she gets placed front and center. Oh, they said that the drug current policy in Canada is racist, and that's how they have to get rid of it, because more black and brown people get arrested with uh, drugs. <laughs>